set this month, I'll be back to eating my TV dinners in front of my radio. <laughs> Your problems are over. Oh? One of the producers at our studio is looking for a secretary to work at his house over the weekend. That sounds wonderful. Guess who the producer is? Who? Milton Berle. Milton Berle, the comedian? It's Milton Berle, the producer. Now he's producing a motion picture. Oh, he doesn't have his television show anymore, does he? No! Oh, the poor soul. I guess he needed a steady job. <laughs> well, I'll help him all I can. Oh, he's a wonderful man. I wonder what... Okay, Miss Evans. Uh, when he comes in, will you tell him that Milton Berle called? <laughs> Ruth, Ruth. Did that secretary get here yet? No, not yet. Oh. Honey, while you're waiting for her to come, yeah. I wish you'd eat some breakfast. Honey, I'm too busy. I'm working on the budget for the picture. Well, you shouldn't be too busy to eat. Huh? You've been working night and day. What are you trying to prove? Oh, I happen to love show business, and I, I want to make good. Make good? Yeah. Are you kidding? Mm. You've had a very successful career. What? As a comedian? Well, Ruth, when a man matures, he wants the kind of success that brings respect. I mean, when you meet people today and you talk about Burl, what's the best thing they can say about him? He's funny. He's funny. He's funny. <laughs> well, I'm out to prove that Burl is not funny. <laughs> That's not a nice thing to say. <laughs> That's what hurts. You love me too much to say it. Of course I love you. Yeah. That's why I hate to see you working so hard, oh. taking on all this hard work. Oh, Ruth, don't Seems to it. me you've had enough success in show business to satisfy anyone. Oh. I mean, vaudeville, movies, television, nightclubs. Mm. Why do you want to be a producer? Don't you understand, Ruth, dear? I want to grow. Well, then he ought to stop smoking. I was... <laughs> Hello, I'm Mrs. Carmichael. Mr. Burrell's been waiting for you. Oh. Well, I, I sure am looking forward to meeting Mr. Burrell. May I take your coat? Oh, thank you. My, you know, I'm a, I'm a very big fan of his. Uh, once I sent him a letter and, and he sent me an autographed picture. Well, now you can meet him in person. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, this is Mr. Burrell. How do you do? Oh, Mr. Burl, I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you. I'm one of your biggest fans. Oh, you're putting me on. No, I'm not. You can ask your maid. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mrs. Burl. Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I apologize. That's all right. Don't apologize. I'm still his maid. <laughs> shopping to do. Yeah. I'll see you later. All right, darling. Goodbye, Mrs. Burrell. Uh, don't I... spend too much money, honey. <laughs> Come on, we better get to work. Yes. Uh, like, a, like a gag I used to do. All play and no work makes no jack. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> oh, you're always funny to me, Mr. Burrow. Really? You know something? I used to just love when you dressed up as a hillbilly really? and you wore those funny clothes and you were. <laughs> Oh, you remember that? I used to just die at you. Oh, I remember what you dressed up like a seal. You were wonderful. You went, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. You were a riot. Well, thank you very much, but I'd like to get some work done. Oh, Would yes, you sit sir. down here, please? Yes, sir. I, I just know working with you is going to be a ball. Well, thank you. Now, when you're ready, I'd like to dictate a letter to my director, Mr. Lou Jackson. Yes, sir. I'm ready, sir. Uh, say, dear Lou, regarding... Uh, your letter of the 25th. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, well, you always make me laugh. What's so funny about regarding your letter of the 25th? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Carmichael, will you please tell me what's so funny? Oh, I don't know. It's the way you say things. Yeah. <laughs> All I said was, regarding your letter of the 25th... I know, I know. <laughs> and you look like a rabbit when you... <laughs> now, let's get back to work. Yes, sir. I, uh... I loved, uh, I loved your suggestion, because I think that we should get Robert Wagner to play the part of the pilot. Oh, Robert Wagner's very good. Thank you. If you have any other ideas on this, let me hear from you. Well, I'll think about it tonight. I, <laughs> I was dictating. Oh, oh. Just sign that, yours truly. Would you do that for me? Yes, sir. And now I have another important letter, personal letter to get out, and it goes to this address right here. Mr. Marvin Kane, Beverly House of Fashion. That's yes, right. Sir. I'd want to order something for my wife. Next week is our wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Dear Marvin. What uh, anniversary is it, Mr. Burrow? Our uh, 14th. Oh. Yeah. Dear Marvin, next week is my... Where did you meet Mrs. Burrow? <laughs> it was a blind date. Some friends brought her to my television show. I can still see her sitting out in the audience that night. She was wearing a beautiful black velvet gown, trimmed in ermine and a string of pearls with matching earrings. Oh. That was our first date. And by the way, that was our first fight. Your first fight? Yes. Well, well what did you fight about? <laughs> well, I came out on the stage wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Goodness. Well, if you had a fight on your first date, how did you ever get together? Would you really like to know, Miss Carmichael? Oh, I'd love to know. A dozen roses did the trick. Oh, that was sweet. Yes. It was the first time anyone ever sent me flowers. <laughs> Wrapped in a girdle. Wrapped in a girdle? Oh, what a sense of humor your wife had. That's true. That's why I begged her to marry me. You begged her sure. to marry you? Yes, I did. Oh, how Where nice. else could I get a part where the baggy pants comic winds up with the lovely leading lady? Oh, what a nice thing to say. <laughs> Dear Marvin. I, I already have that. <laughs> Anything wrong? Oh, um, no. I, I just think the way you feel about Mrs. Burrow is very touching. Well, she's my wife. Yeah, I know, I know, but you, you hear about Hollywood and Hollywood marriages, you know. I've heard that sometimes stars are so, so involved with themselves that they're just not capable of loving anyone else. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Look how I love Marvin. I've called him dear six times already. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, uh, dear Marvin, next week is my 14th wedding anniversary, and I would like to order something very special for Ruth. A black velvet gown, trimmed in ermine, and a nice strand of pearls with matching earrings. Oh, Mr. Burrow, what a beautiful thought, getting the same outfit she wore on her first date with you. Oh, no wonder you have such a great marriage. You're so sweet and so kind and no, so no, thoughtful. No, 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 Mrs. Carmichael. Ruth is the one who's sweet and kind, seeing that I eat right, that I don't work too hard, sitting out in the audience and laughing at all my jokes. Believe me, that takes loyalty, real loyalty, especially some of the jokes I told in Kansas City. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Carmichael, whenever I'm sick, she brings me hot chicken soup. Oh? And when I have a fever, she brings me frozen chicken soup and puts it on my head. <laughs> that, and that's one of the jokes I told in Kansas City. <laughs> and she laughed? She even applauded. 
Oh, she really loves you. <laughs> well, that's why I try to make her happy. And on our anniversary, I'll spring the gowns and the pearls and the earrings all in such a way that it'll be a complete surprise. How? What are you going to do? I'll come down the stairs wearing the whole outfit. <laughs> some tea, and I'm going to look for something for a sandwich. Well, now, look, Mr. Burrell, you have a lot of work to do. How about letting me fix lunch? Do you think you can find your way around? Oh, sure. I love to look in other people's refrigerators. Really? <laughs> I'm a medicine chest man myself. <laughs> oh, funny. Mr. Burrell, you're funny. Thank you. Oh, look here. Some beautiful tomatoes and lettuce and... Oh, you know something might make a wonderful Caesar salad. You do? Yeah, better than Julius. The <laughs> Caesar salad better than Judas. That's funny. Funny. <laughs> you know where I can find a very large salad bowl? I'll find Any one. Any kind I'll of salad. I'll find one. What's that? That's the front door, dear. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah. Hello. Oh! Oh, it's Rudy Lee, the movie star. <laughs> oh, just don't stand there. Let her in. Oh! Excuse my secretary, she didn't mean to kill your entrance. <laughs> she just gets excited about movie stars. Well, it's good to see you, Ruder. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruder is a friend of the family. Oh. Uh, let, let's sit down. The, what is it? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Ruder, this is my secretary, Mrs. Carmichael. Hello. How do you do, Miss Lee? I'm so glad to meet you. I go to see all of your movies. You do? Yes, some of them I see two and three times. Well, thank you. I never get enough of you, Miss Lee. You know, I just wish you were old enough to have some of your pictures on the Late Late Show. <laughs> oh, that's very flattering. <laughs> to me, it isn't. Uh, let's uh, sit down and get comfortable. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, excuse me, I, I have some water boiling. <laughs> Milton? Yes, dear? Where's Ruth? Oh, Ruth, she's out shopping. Uh, she's oh. Around. Now, what is all this I hear about your being a producer? That's true, darling. I'm producing a great one. The picture's called The Friendly Sky. And the reason I have to come over here, there's a part in it for you that would be just perfect. Oh, really? Yeah. What's it like? Well, it's a very dramatic part about a girl who becomes involved with a married man. Oh, Milton, that doesn't sound like me. Oh, no. I never play the other woman. I always play wholesome parts. You know, the girl next door. Well, th that's why it'll be good for you, because it's different. Look, instead of me trying to sell you, how about, uh, uh, Ruta, reading a scene with me? I have it right here. Uh, turn to page 17. I don't come in until page 17. <laughs> well, the early pages are all about you. They build up your entrance. Oh. <laughs> now, honey, the scene starts where you say, where's your wife? All up. right, let me just look this over. That's fine. Uh, by the way, my secretary's fixing some lunch. Will you join us? Fine. Yeah, how about a cup of tea while we're waiting? Oh, I'd love some. Okay. Mrs. Carmichael? What? Mrs. Carmichael? Yeah, where are you? <laughs> I'm talking on the intercom. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. You're coming in loud and clear. <laughs> Miss Lee is going to join us for lunch. Oh, really? Yes. And we'd like a cup of tea now. Oh, Roger. <laughs> well, how about it, beautiful? Are you ready? All right, Milton. Now, where is your wife? Who cares about my wife? We're alone. <laughs> Darling, it's so wonderful to see you again. Not nearly as wonderful as it is for me to see you. It's a shame that we have to steal these precious moments. I treasure every one of them. But what about your wife? Are you sure she doesn't suspect? My wife is too stupid to suspect. <laughs> trying to get rid of her for years. <laughs> Darling, let's not talk about her. Just cuddle close and let my lips caress your loveliness. Oh, my love, my pet. It's 
no use. I can't go on sharing you. I can't, I can't, I can't! <laughs> Well, no use crying over spilt milk. That's very funny. <laughs> very funny. Well, then that's a wonderful party, am I right? Oh, I don't know, Milton. I'll have to think about this. you were talking to her. Uh, one lump, please. Oh, Mrs. Carmichael. Yes? Would you mind giving me a couple of lumps? I would love to. Serve your lunch as soon as it's ready, sir. The Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. Would you uh, care to join us for some tea? Oh, I wouldn't think of intruding on your privacy. <laughs> She's a wonderful secretary, and she makes a Caesar salad better than Julius. <laughs> Milton, that's a very funny line. It's mine. <laughs> Just can't believe it. I thought he was such a nice man. Imagine that. I used to laugh at him all the time. I'll never laugh at him again. Tell him that. Fooling around with another woman when he's got such a wonderful wife. He ought to be ashamed of himself, that's what. Hi, Mrs. Carmichael. Oh, uh, hi, Mrs. Pearl. <laughs> What's Mr. Pearl got you doing? Oh, well, I, 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 I'm just fixing him some lunch. Oh, that's very nice of you. Where is Mr. Pearl? Uh, but, but he's inside with a, a friend of the family. <laughs> friend of the family? Uh, Miss Ruta Lee. Oh, how nice. Milton's been wanting to get together with Ruta for a long time. <laughs> He got together with her, all right. I think I'll go in and say hello. Oh, no, no, they're very busy. They're very busy in there. I don't think you should go in. Uh, I, you, you've been busy, too, haven't you? Uh, yes, I've been doing some shopping. Yeah. I bought Milton a surprise anniversary gift. Oh, how nice. Well, I think I'll just poke my head in. No, don't poke. <laughs> Uh, so you, you got him a surprise gift, huh? Yes. I bought him a new golf bag. Oh, that's wonderful. Sometimes a man gets tired going around with the same old bag. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's nice when a man has two bags. <laughs> That's a good gift. <laughs> no, don't let him know you're home. Please, you, you better stay right out here. You don't go in there because then he'll know you're home and he'll come out here and he might see your gift. You better hide it. You really ought to hide this. Well, yes, it's a beautiful gift. You don't want him to see it. And if he knows you're home, he might come out here. Why don't you hide it upstairs? Maybe you're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you're fixing Milton some lunch. He needs to keep up his strength. Well? Milton, I just don't think this part is right for me. 
Why not? Well, like I said, I've never played the other woman before. Oh. Now, the public accepts me in a certain image, and I just don't think I can be convincing in this role. Convincing? Are you kidding? Rudy, you'd be great. Do you think I'd let you do anything that might hurt your image or jeopardize your career just to get you in my picture? Yes, I do. Well, that's beside the point. <laughs> now, Rudy, please, will you take the script home, get the feel of it, then come over here Monday night, have dinner with Ruth and me, and we can discuss it, huh? Well, all right, I'll take the script. But I can't possibly be here Monday night. Because Monday night, you and Ruth are coming over to my house. I'm having a little dinner party in honor of your 14th wedding anniversary. That's wonderful, darling. <laughs> and maybe, maybe sometime during the evening you and I can sneak off together someplace and discuss things. All right. <laughs> Mr. Burrow. Yes, Mrs. Carmichael. May I toss the salad? Please do. <laughs> Idea. What are you, some kind of a nut? You're the one who's some kind of a nut. Married 14 years to a wonderful wife. A wife who worries about you, brings you chicken soup when you're sick, and laughs at your stale jokes in Kansas City. And what thanks does she get? You call her stupid and carry on with another woman. Another woman? Me? Oh, that's so innocent, you teeny bopper, you. <laughs> over the intercom. Just cuddle close. Let my lips caress your loveliness. Oh, my love. Oh, my pet. I can't go on sharing you. I can't. I can't. I can't. Caress your loveliness. Are you crazy or something? That was the scene we were rehearsing from his picture. Oh, one of my, my new picture. Your picture. Yes, my... Ah, a likely story. <laughs> Listen, dear, I can't Listen see you. Listen to me. <laughs> what is it, Mrs. Carmichael? What is it? You can't fool me like you fool your stupid wife. <laughs> stupid wife? Did somebody call me? <laughs> Ruth, Ruth. I thought you gave up comedy. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mrs. Burl. I tried to keep all of this from you, you poor little thing. Now, now, Ruth, this is an entire misunderstanding. I'll say it yes, is. Yes, yes. Mrs. Carmichael overheard us rehearsing a love scene, yeah. and she believed it. You bet I believed it. I heard every word you said. You're not kidding me. Now, will you stop that? You give me that. This is the script. This is the script that we're reading. Don't you see these lines? Yeah, what script? Caress me, my love. Let me caress uh, your loveliness. My love, my pet. My cat. Pet. My cat. I bear to share yeah, it. Yeah, read it. Look. Read it. <laughs> I apologize. Uh. Oh, good heavens. But when I heard it over the intercom, it all sounded so real. You were so convincing. Oh, I don't know what came over me. I know what came over me. <laughs> Mr. Burl, yeah. can you ever forgive me? <laughs> forgive you? Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. I'll not only forgive you, but I want to tell you, I love you. You love me? Yeah, because you believed Ruta as the other woman. Now, Ruta, this ought to convince you that you can play the part. <laughs> Some lunch, because the salad's on me. <laughs>